Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches. In today's video we are going to do two things. So thing number one, we are going to review a calculator watch. Yes, we haven't reviewed enough calculators watches thus far. I believe we've only done two, so it's time for the third one. And uh, it's from a different brand and other than what we've reviewed thus far, we did the Orient and the Casio. We have a Seiko and it is the Seiko 359. A more unusual and not the norm in what you'd expect in a calculator watch shape and appearance. And the thing number two, we are going to set the rules for the giveaway. Yes, we've reached, we're actually beyond 500 subscribers and I cannot be grateful enough uh, for you watching my videos. So we are going to do a giveaway at the end. So enough of this intro talk, let's get to the review. After releasing their first calculator watch in 1978, the C-153, Seiko released in 1979 the C-359, which is what we are looking at today. The C-359 was released in two general versions, which you see here. Now, there were different color schemes, but these are the two shapes of cases you can find. The more rounded one and the more, well, straight line one, which is the one I have. From the information I found, it was made up until 85, which is a decent run of six years. I really love the design and even the solution to put the keypad buttons on two rows and the tiny speaker grill beside it. It sort of reminds me of an electrical locomotive for some reason. At 35mm in width, 37 height, 10 thick, it is a medium to small watch by today's standards. But because it is more square than round, it wears a little bit bigger. It will look okay on a bigger wrist. Now let's have a closer look at the functions of the watch and its innards. Okay, so here we are at the bench and uh, we'll have a look at the functions and it does tell time, it has a date, here you can even check the uh, hour that the alarm is set on uh, and it does have a calculator as expected, the main feature. And uh, if we were compared to a Casio, I'll show you what the Seiko has in addition. This Casio has one, two, three, four, five, six digits. Well, the Seiko has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits. And furthermore, it can actually do percentage with this key right on the side. Uh, to get eight digits, you would have to have a scientific or some other model from Casio. Uh, yeah, you could have chosen the Alba one or the Pulsar, uh, which has so much more than this. This one also has eight digits. But uh, out of the three, I would pick uh, the middle. One thing that Seiko could have improved, and you can see here in the case of the Alba, it has the stylus included in the clasp. So you would use this just to work the keys, but on the Seiko, uh, they chose not to include something like that. They actually included a pen. Uh, now I don't have that pen, but I will insert an image. I don't know if that pen is used only for the buttons or you can even write with it. But uh, yeah, usually a defect that you will find on the ones up for sale is that uh, the printing on the above the keys is actually scratched off because people, because they didn't have the stylus, it was easily lost, not being in the clasp, they used whatever they had on hand, whether it was a screwdriver or a regular pen, and it could actually slip easy and it would get scratched. So that's an improvement place, but it's part of the charm. Now, uh, another very interesting thing and uh, is the light. And you, you can see that it is, in the middle of the screen, well, the bottom center. And it kind of kind of makes sense. Uh, Casio chose, and many other models, even from Seiko, uh, they chose to put the light on the side. And it really does work better because if it's in the middle, it will illuminate the screen uh, more easily than you would get on a side light. So I really love that one too. Uh, the alarm. Uh, you can engage it and disengage it by pressing, sorry, let's go into timekeeping mode. Press this button here 
and there we have the alarm engaged and disengage it in the same manner. It is a loud alarm, so uh, if you get one of these and the alarm is very, very quiet, then for sure there's something up, something's up with it. Okay, um, let's open it up and see what's inside. Now we'll just remove the battery. Uh, I don't have a gasket on the battery cover, that's why it falls out so easily. And uh, you might be tempted to use uh, one of those back cover poppers or a pocket knife to open the back cover and I assume that's what happened here with the previous owner. Uh, but this watch has one of those locking mechanisms hidden underneath the spring bar and I'll show you what I mean. those locks and they are only on uh, one side of the watch. I'll take it off on this side as well so you can see. You can see nothing there. So you would have to press on these two and then gently uh, part the back cover from the rest of the case. We'll use a screwdriver. And you do have to be careful late like this so the keys don't fall out because the keys are oops individually oh, they are individual keys so this is the membrane that the keyboard presses against just put it there and this is the module uh, that's where the each individual key goes and this is the piezo ceramic speaker and we'll just remove it from this here is the battery recess and uh, these are the two screws on the top we'll just give them a quick remove Now the back can be easily parted. And there we go. On the bottom side it only has this latch. And here is the circuit and there we can see the micro light. I'll do a zoom in so you can easily see it. And we have a back light uh, board uh, which is they started to be more common uh, late in the 80s because most manufacturers used ceramic PCBs and this just shows that Seiko wanted to put as much modern technology as they could in their watch. So those were the innards of the watch and god I, I, I just love so much more the Seiko than the Casio and I, I know people are going to judge me for that but uh, yeah, with a Casio, you do have the classical shape and it is the embodiment of a calculator watch. You can recognize it from like uh, 50 meters away on somebody's wrist. But I, I just like the, the exclusivity and the more under the radar uh, look of the Seiko calculator watch uh, with its asymmetrical keyboard and you wouldn't know it's there if you wouldn't look close enough so yeah i'm i'm getting far too hung up on this uh let's give it some grades collectability well it is seiko and it is a calculator watch what do you expect it is sought after and because of the asymmetrical design and unusual shape other than the other calculator watches it makes it that more appealing eight out of ten for collectability in terms of price, you can pick a nice looking one for around $100 to $130. It can go in the region of $200 and beyond if it's a pristine condition one and has the manual and the pen. So we'll give it a 5 out of 10 for price. The C359 can be found at any moment on eBay in various conditions, so there is no shortage of them, but do look for one with the print above the keypad still present, as that is the one of the things that wear off first.
8 out of 10 for availability. While hunting for this watch, I was a little bit torn uh, between which one to get. Should I get the more square one or the rounded one? I ended up getting the more square one and uh, I think I made a good decision at the point I was really convinced, but now for some reason, I also want the rounded one. Uh, but I guess that's just my LCD watch brain going uh, haywire. I'm curious of your opinion. Do, which one do you prefer? The more square one like this or the more steampunkish one, uh, the rounded one? Leave it in the comments below because uh, that may influence me getting one of those or not. All right, so here are the rules for the giveaway. But first, uh, I've already shown this. The watch that I'm giving away is a Citizen shock sensor and the module number is, is uh, let's see, D132 and it looks like this and it has a really nifty function and I'll show you why it's called a shock sensor because uh, when it receives a shock uh, it can record a lap and I'll show you right now there we go lap recorded lap recorded again again so cool right the shock sensor and I did put it on this NATO strap uh, it's very comfortable if you want to use it for sports then that's this is what you should go for as it can easily be washed and uh, Yeah, you can change it out and put whatever colors you want to match your sporting outfit So the rules of the giveaway are simple. You just have to be a subscriber of the channel it Doesn't matter if you subscribe today or you subscribe a year ago uh, You have to be a subscriber and you have to answer the following question on the Seiko C359, where is the micro light located? Leave that in the comments below and that's how I'll pick everyone. Put them in one of those uh, randomizing websites thing and uh, we'll pick out the winner in the next episode. Thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe so you'll get notified when I release new digital watch related videos. I try to do that every one or every second week and until next time don't forget to enter the giveaway to win this really really cool digital watch bye